it's all very glamorous. I keep this chocolate in particular in our pantry for a very good reason, and it is period time. I feel like every person who has a period has this stigma that chocolate is like what we need during this time, what we crave during this time, and I don't know if there's any scientific backing to that. I just know that I keep this around for my period because if I don't, I'll end up eating things that are much worse for me. It just feels right to start off a video about periods with chocolate. So I'll just tell you, this is by a company called Endorphin Foods and uh, it comes in completely compostable packaging. It's made in Oakland, California, with all fair trade ingredients. And of course it's free of any animal products. So I love this stuff. I get it at Thrive Market and I keep it in stock. Like I said here at the house. So I guess step one of my period routine get your chocolate in stock. Anyway, other than that, today's video is going to be quite personal. I'm going to be getting into the nitty gritty of things that I use, how I do it, all that sort of thing. I've talked about the actual like menstrual products I use before in a video. So many of you guys know I use Thinks, which are period underwear. I don't use cup, I don't like the cup. And I have a discount code with Thinks underwear and I swear by them, they are my favorite. But I get so many other questions about them, how I use them, how many I have, how do they work, da 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 da, all that stuff. We're gonna get into all that nitty gritty in this video. All right, so getting down to the nitty gritty, we're gonna talk about things that I would not normally talk about in any other video, and really probably not even in this video. As anybody who is a menstruating human, we will say, I'm sure you know that it's pretty stigmatized and people make you feel weird about it, you feel embarrassed. It's just been ingrained into us since we were younger that it's something that we shouldn't talk about. That narrative on this platform is further backed up by the fact that every single time I talk about my period here on my channel, the video gets demonetized. Apparently, periods are not ad friendly, which is fine. All right, so the questions, the weird questions, the weird things that you need to talk about when you explain to someone that you use reusable period underwear instead of like typical tampons or pads. Here's the thing, everyone thinks you're crazy for using a period cup or reusable period underwear until they try them and then they understand why these things are so amazing for people. As I said before, and I will say again, I do not like period cups, so we'll take them out of here. But the period underwear, they're coming with me. These questions are essential if you're someone who wants to start using reusable period underwear for your period, so let's just get into it. Number one, how many pairs of underwear do you own? You know what, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would say somewhere between seven and nine, and I actually just recently ordered three more for a specific reason, I'm gonna tell you why. So you guys might know that I've used reusable pads in the past, and I really love the company that I used, and I hate to not use them anymore, so I will always recommend them whenever I talk about reusable pads, because I know for so many people out there, they do work, just like I recommend period cups, for those of you who they do work for. But this is my period routine and I'm telling you what works for me. So the company I used to use, I'll have them linked below, you can check them out if you think that those would work out for you. But for me, the reason that I turn to just things now is because I had a lot of leaks with my uh, reusable period pads. Honestly, they shift a lot, right? Because the only thing holding them in place per se is their little snap, one little snap. Whereas normal pads have like a line of tape going all the way up and down them so that they don't move. And if these move, while you're wearing something, wearing anything, if they're just not in the right position and you don't realize it, your blood is going where the fuck ever it wants. I had one extremely bad experience recently, which I'm not gonna share because I just felt awful about it. I felt really bad that it happened. That made me switch to just using things. And I very, very rarely have leaks with leaks? Leaks with my things. Like less leaks than I had when I used disposable pads. And you can ask Madison this because I used to have problems with it all the time. Me switching to just things saved our bed sheets and she will now allow me to actually have white bed sheets in the house. Anyway, so that's the reason I tried to stop using reusable pads and more recently Thinks actually came out with the super high-waisted underwear. So I always use the high-waisted underwear if you guys are wondering which pair I use. I use the high-waisted ones. They are my favorite but they just came out with super high-waisted which holds up to four tampons 
worth of blood. I only have one pair right now. I was testing out one pair to make sure I liked them before I ordered more. And I just placed an order for three because whenever you order three pairs, you get a discount. And then if you use my link in the description, you have two discounts stacked on top of it. So I just got three more. So by the end of this whole journey, I'll probably have around 12 pairs. Those are the two questions in one. How many do you have and why don't you use reusable pads? That's the answer. So next, how often do you wash them and or how do you wash them? That is the most nitty gritty part of this that I literally have never, even when people recommend things, I, my friends on the internet who recommend things in reusable period underwear, they never talk about how they clean them. And I get it, it can seem weird and gross and if that's gonna gross you out, don't watch this. But if you genuinely need help with this, let's do it. So number one, I keep a bucket by my toilet. <laughs> Really glamorous, I know. Whenever I need to switch out a pair, I go up there, I take off the ones I'm wearing, I rinse them out. When I'm done rinsing them out, I keep them in the bucket, which I keep about halfway full of water. I put on a new pair, I go on about my day. At the end of that day, or sometimes every other day, sometimes I don't do it every day, sometimes I can do it every other day, I take that bucket downstairs, put those into my washer, and my washer actually has a setting for extra small and also tap cold. This is the most energy efficient way I can do this unless I wash them completely by hand, which would take a very long time and honestly, I don't think I could personally be thorough enough to feel okay with that. So usually when I have about six to seven pairs, I'll throw them in the washer, put them on the smallest load, the tap cold, run them, and yes, normally I just use my soap nuts, it's literally not a problem. But right now I am testing out some other laundry detergent that you guys have been asking me about so much. It's uh, these strips by True Earth, which I put a whole strip in there, probably could have gotten by with just half of one, I didn't think about that. But I put them in the washer, when they're done, yes I do hang dry them. I honestly think this is helping two things. Number one, helping them last a lot longer, and number two, helping with staining. So my first ever pair of things, I guess that's a question, that's a whole nother question. So we're gonna go into this question, do they stain? Obviously they're black, so the staining is not like that prevalent, but my first pair of things I ever owned do have like bleached stains. I don't know if that's from like the proteins in our blood, I'm not really sure how that happened, but back when I lived in our garage apartment, I couldn't hang dry my clothes, so I did tumble dry them back then, and they do have like bleached marks. It's different than a stain, but there are marks on that one pair. So I do hang dry them. That usually takes overnight. Like if I do it at the end of the day, when I wake up the next day, usually they're dry, not always. Kind of depends on the temperature in the house and how often the air is kicking on and off, that sort of thing. But yes, I do let them hang dry. Other little tips that you might have questions about. Whenever I'm going to take a shower, whatever pair I'm wearing, I will just put it in the shower with me. I have these little suction hooks that I can put them on so that they are rinsing in the shower and I'm not using any extra water to rinse them out. You do definitely have to get more personal with yourself to have a zero waste period routine and be okay with your bodily fluids, obviously. I also use the pre-shower water to fill up that bucket whenever I can. And I think that's all the tips I had. Let me look at my notes. Nope, I think that's all the questions you guys sent in asking me about my things. So I, I love them. Literally, obviously, I've tried out multiple different brands of pads. I actually have tried out different brands of underwear, even though I haven't talked about it because the other ones I just didn't like as much, particularly because Things has the high-waisted ones and I am a high-waisted bitch. So yeah, I'm a huge advocate for Things period underwear. If you guys wanna check them out, I have a discount link. You just click the link and it takes you to my little page over there if you wanna test them out for yourself. And then I have a few more things to talk about with my period period other than the things that we've already talked about. So let's get to that. All right, so a few more things that have to do with my zero waste period. The first little extra thing I wanted to talk about is pain and medications surrounding that. I don't personally take any medications when I'm on my period for two reasons. Number one, I have a liver condition and have been advised against taking most painkillers or like things like that. I can take ibuprofen, um, but there are other ones that really would be really bad for me to take, so I just avoid them at all costs to be on the safe side. And number two is because my pain doesn't get to the point where I feel like I need it. Obviously. I do get cramps always in my lower back, I hate it. But because of my condition and because I just am like weirdly opposed to taking any form of medication unless I absolutely need it, I avoid them. I never take them. But I'm not here to shame anyone or to tell anyone that they shouldn't take anything that is going to make them feel better. Obviously we still all have to function and if ibuprofen or any sort of pain medication helps you do that, please uh, take it. I would love if any of you guys have some sort of lower waist way or more natural way of healing 
managing your cramps and your pains. Let us know in the comments. I love when you guys share what you know and you can share it with everybody else here and they can all learn from that. Recently I bought my fiance this like sack of I think rice and you heat it up in the microwave and then you put it on your parts and it's supposed to help. She really liked it. I don't know if it necessarily like soothed her pain but it was a relaxing like nice thing to have. I shared that in a vlog recently so I'll link it up there if you guys want to go check that out. But yeah I personally don't have any recommendations as far as pain goes and then a couple of the things I wanted to say are just I really try to take it easy, especially, especially, especially on the first day. And I know that so many people like are not able to take it easy, take the day off. I mean, I don't know what's going on right now. You're probably in self isolation. So maybe you're probably having a chiller day than you normally would. But because I use the natural cycles app, I kind of know what days I typically feel more anxious, more annoyed when I'm going to have a day where I just feel completely unmotivated. I'm able to track all of that in natural cycles so that I can try my best to plan on my first day to be able to take it easy but do whatever you can to like kind of do some extra self-care during this time if you're having pain or if it stresses you out if you start to feel stressed or you know your hormones are doing things to you during this time so whatever you can do to make yourself feel a little bit better I highly encourage those things other things are I always wear my Mia Coda sweatpants during this time these are my absolute favorite sweatpants made sustainably and ethically in New York by a brand called Mia Coda I'll have them linked below I just I love them as a brand I have spoken to the women who work there and I think their items are super high quality I've been wearing them all the time like literally non-stop at my house and they don't have any holes they don't start stretching in weird places they're really really good and they're the most comfortable damn things in the world and also I don't wear a bra during my period man I don't wear a bra in general sometimes I wear bandeaus you guys know this but I don't even want to bother doing that on my period I just can't be bothered but a lot of you guys have been asking me about sustainable lingerie wear so I'm going to have a link to that in the description because I have a list on my blog so but I would list that here in case it hurts you to not wear a bra on your period because I know that that's that happens to some people as well. Well, those are all the things I think I wanted to share in today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped answer any questions you had about a zero waste period routine or just getting to see someone else's experience and what they go through and what they do during this time. Cause I just, I don't think we talk about it enough and I just think that normalizing it could make people feel better. And also I'm trying to think of things I can film while I'm stuck in my house and definitely my period can take place in my house. I don't need to leave the house for it. And another thing that during this whole crisis situation, I don't have to go out and get any sort of tampons or pads. I don't have to worry about their not being stock. Reusables win uh, in this scenario. So thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And remember, until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs. But the world needs, I mean, really, right now, right? All the good that you could do. Bye, guys.